That's right. Raymond, how long have you been dating her? Uh, I've seen her twice, Friday and last Friday and Saturday. It's all creepy, Anna. Okay. Yeah. And it's been three and a half years since I've had sex. Wow. Yeah. And no, nothing at all. No, uh, no hand jobs. She didn't put her cane in your ass. Nothing. <laughs> no. Why has it been so long since you've had a physical relationship with somebody? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm a. True uh, forty. I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no, Why? No, I'm. You know, I got the sort of low self esteem. I'm. Having a hard time with women. All right. All right. Yeah. Hey, Raymond, well, maybe this is just what Raymond needs. Yeah, we give it sort of a, a, a soft blessing. I mean, the last one was uh, married, and she had two kids. Yeah, right. We, yeah, the whole the pattern here is not good, Raymond. Yeah. But what about going right. out to, like, a bar with your friends? These, these must be safer women for him in some way. They aren't threatening to him. Right? You know what I mean? Well, the, the yeah. ones that... That's uh, why I can hold out, too. Right. Then looking towards, um, they like to play games. You know, the younger women. What would those games be? What's that? What kind of games would those be? Um, you know, like oh, yeah, I'd see. oh it right. starts out like they wanna they wanna you know get together and all this, and then they say, oh, we just wanna be friends. Yeah, yeah. that's not a game. That's not a game. That's not a game. They don't like it. They don't. They don't go out. Let me yet. tell you what that game's called. We don't like Raymond. Yeah. yeah. That's Raymond. not a game. Every, everybody loves Raymond. I'm sorry. That's not a game, Raymond. That's uh, how people sort of size each other up and yeah. the messages they give to each other when they're deciding whether or not to go out. Mm, okay. All right. It's no game. All right, Raymond, we're we're, uh, we're sorry for busting your balls. She's 40. You've been on a couple dates. Go out. See where it leads. All right. Okay? Fair enough. Okay. Be good to the kids. If you're, in the, if you're in those kids' lives, stay in there for a while. Okay. How many yeah. units uh, is the building you're working on? 144. Oh, just a bunch of trash in there, right? That's a lot oh, yeah. of units. Yeah, where are you, where are you calling from? Sacramento. Mm-hmm. And 144 units? Imagine yeah. that in the summertime. Mm-hmm. What's the uh, what's the worst es- worst uh, ethnicity to go to? Who are the who are the dirtiest? Hmm? What a weird question. That you is. know, <laughs> believe me, he's got an answer. Uh, well, in his building, I mm-hmm. might lose my job. No, the, uh, there's a couple of Hispanic people, mm-hmm. and it's just pretty raunchy in there. Yeah. You know? Okay. Those people. That's all right. Those, right. People, those particular. I, just Hispanic. checking. That's all. Just trying to get a little survey. Listen, I used keep, to do. You're keeping track, aren't you? I used to do uh, earthquake rehab in downtown L.A. I used to work in these 60-unit uh, buildings and have to go into each one of these things, and these things were subsidized. Subsidized uh, always spells trouble. It, it's the more here. Here it is. The more money that Uncle Sam pays for you to have that apartment, the worse it smells. Right. If he pays twenty bucks a month toward your your apartment, it just smells like a gym sock in there. He's uh, he's putting in three hundred and fifty bucks. It's like uh, a Got rhino off. took a dump <laughs> in the living room, and these people were all subsidized. And there were guys in there who had like buckets of uh, feces and things no, like they that. Did not. Yes, oh, when, yeah. when people get crazy, I've seen that they stuff. go right yeah. for the ass. They go, right? Yeah, well, they, they all just, No, yeah, they do weird stuff like that. I, I, yeah. I, used to, you know, I worked for years at a county hospital, and they would haul people in <clears throat> who would be, like, up to their knees and stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, one guy had an apartment. At one of his years, they're all singles, just uh, just not even one bedroom, just a living room and a kitchen. Uh, one guy had about uh, a 1,000 panels cut out from half-gallon milk or one-gallon milk cartons with the missing kids on it. All piled up, all the way to the ceiling. No way! All the missing kids, like trading cards. Ooh. The other I'll guy, give you two Beths for one <laughs> Mikey. Oh, the boy. one guy had a bucket of Dookie. And one time, when I was, uh, I, I think I told this story a long time ago. I was out back. I had my table saw and everything set up out back of the apartment. And there's the out back, just big enough to get a clothesline strung. And it's a five-story building. And I was out there milling wood with my table saw, so it was loud, and my, my back was sort of turned. And uh, the other guys from the crew, they got the dookie bucket out of this guy's room. <laughs> the dookie and, bucket. And they That's put the it, technical term. They put it near me and my saw, but they put, like, a couple pieces of wood and some trash around it and stuff, so I couldn't really see it. And then they all climbed up to the roof, and they dropped bolts, <laughs> the bolts that we're using for the tension anchors. You know those uh, those metal plates that are on the side yeah. of uh, those brick buildings? Yes. Uh-huh. We're putting those on. They took those bolts, and they're dropping four stories down into this bucket of dookie. And this, uh, so every, like, five minutes, I'd turn around and start sniffing, like, hey, what's going on around <laughs> here? But the saw was so loud, and they all hid behind the parapet right. above me, four stories, and I couldn't tell what the F was going on. All I knew was I smelled dookie. Whose dookie was it? 
It was uh, old. Uh, another guy named Shaky Jake pulled a shotgun on me. <laughs> <laughs> he was drunk all the time. Oh, oh he was just. Oh, and we'd have to go in these people's units and ask them to get out, and we'd have to work in there, and he'd like open a closet. And wow, all that's weird amazing. Stuff. Oh, Shaky Jake pulled a shotgun on me. No, he pulled the shotgun out, and I was the only guy he'd talk to. I wasn't an asshole back then. And uh, they all sent me in to go talk to Shaky Jake, and I sat down with Shaky, who was drunk, and we sat on the foot of his bed, and he was in his underpants, <laughs> and he had the shotgun pulled back. And here's, here's oh, the thing I remember about it. Jake told me he wasn't going to shoot me, but he was tired of people coming into his unit. He was going to shoot somebody. But I convinced him to put the gun away. But he had the hammer pulled back on the shotgun. And he couldn't figure out how to get the hammer back down without the shotgun going off. <laughs> and just picture this. I'm sitting next to a uh, shaky Jake, black guy, probably about 65, probably one about 120 pounds. He's about six foot tall and he's wearing a pair of boxer shorts and nothing else. And I'm sitting on the foot of his bed next to him with my ears plugged. I got both fingers in both ears waiting for the shotgun to go off, which he's sort of pointing at the ground, but he can't get the hammer back down without the thing going off. Anyway, I think uh, Shaky did get it to go back down. Shaky without Jake's going on line him. six, I think, isn't he? Oh, good. <laughs> Shaky? <laughs> Neved? 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 Uh, yeah. What's up? Neved. Neved. You're 18. Yeah. Um, I called because uh, I feel like I'm stuck in between two worlds. Like... I can hear voices from both of them. I can have sensations from both of them. I even think I can see, like, just lately, just a little bit of the other one. Do you uh, do? Do you do speed? No, I do not. Do you do any drugs? Uh, I did LSD. I smoked pot. How many times did you do LSD? Well, the first time I did it, fifteen. I knew you guys were gonna ask me this, and I did fifteen heads for my first time. Okay. When was that? So you really took it slow. <laughs> Your first time, you did. You dropped fifteen tabs of I LSD. They gave me like ten for free, so I thought they were bum. Mm. So I just took them all. Okay, hold on, we got to take a break. All right. Neved? Yeah. Now hang on. All right. Stay in the uh, dimension where you're on hold. <laughs> okay. I actually go away to the other dimension, but come back in four minutes. Yes, sir. All right, we'll uh, we'll get uh, back. <laughs> Sean Hayes is here from uh, Will and Grace, and when we get back, we'll uh, get uh, Neved uh, reeled into uh, one dimension. Lifeline. Be right back in a minute. But one KFMA. Hey, love line. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Fax number three one zero. I can't something. say that damn phone number with that guy yelling one. Two. <laughs> three in the background. Hey, somebody very kindly sent in our book for us to sign it, which we would be happy to do. If people want to send this book we wrote, which you can get at any bookstore or Amazon.com, and uh, send it with a self strip. Self. Drew, you were the world's worst stamp blogger. Envelope. Go ahead, you do it. <laughs> you, you wouldn't have done it at all had I left it up to you. Here's the deal. We wrote this book. We haven't talked about it much because um, we don't get to, I don't think. But we're talking about it now, so screw everyone. Uh, it's not called the Love Line book. It's called the uh, Dr. Drew and Adam book. And uh, it's got our pictures on the front. You can get it at a bookstore. And if you want us to sign it, you can send it to us, and then we'll send it back to you. But send the self addressed stamped envelope. Big you have to. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep it and see if I can resell yeah, we, it. We Who? will keep it if it's not the right envelope. But we will autograph it. We'll just yeah, keep it. But and I won't do it. I won't do it. Here. Yeah, but I won't do it to the person. I'll do it to me. Uh, I'm not I'm, sending it back. I want to know who thought of the title. Oh. Uh, it's genius, isn't That's it? It's amazing. Yeah. It's it's so... Uh, well, it kind of sneaks up on you. It's yeah. trans <laughs> transcends. Transcends. The Dr. Drew and Adam book. Let me tell you. Well, I don't have to tell you. No. Everyone in this business is an idiot. Yes. They really are. There's more people than not get paid for doing absolutely nothing in this town, and it's truly amazing. I used to think that I was average intelligence until I got into this business and met some of the people in this business, yeah. and I now have labeled myself a super genius. <laughs> I'm a superhuman I, I really am. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the Nostradamus and Plato and Socrates of our times, after talking to a lot of the uh, folks who are in charge of making the decisions in this yeah, town. They don't know. Oh, boy. And not only Did do he... they don't know, they don't know enough just to shut up. <laughs> That's I'd give them credit for just you know what it's at the point in this town where I don't even care if someone's got a good idea I will label you a partial genius if you'll just shut the f up <laughs> and listen to me when I'm talking 
jackasses. Which is why you have a talk show. Anyway, so the book title. The book title. The book title. Oh, we wanted to call it, um, well, we couldn't call it Loveline because of some legalities. So uh, then we we had a a thousand different scenarios, a thousand different titles, and they wouldn't agree to any of them. So I finally said, well, just put our name on the book, and this is about what they came up with. Tell John the one you wanted. Well, we wanted, well, I I don't even like the one we originally said. Which was Everybody's Circle Jerk, I bet. Something like that? No. No? So. Oh, that'll be the next one, though. Right. Teaching Teens to Smoke is going to be the title of my next book. <laughs> uh, Drew's from uh, Drew's from Pasadena. Wait a minute. Adam's from Mars. Adam's from Mars and Drew's from Pasadena? Right. Is that what it was? Right. Right. But uh, they wouldn't let us do that, so we went with this. For real? Was that yeah. One? I like that. It's pretty cool. Neved. Yes. You're 18. Yeah. No, we talked to Neved. He's having hallucinations. Yeah. And Neved, well, how long ago did you do all that acid? It was a while ago, but I don't believe there's hallucinations. Uh, Naved, they are hallucinations. Okay, um, pal, that's how we tell whether somebody is psychiatrically ill or not. God, how do you when, do 15 tabs of acid your first time? You just, who knows? You'd you have know. to take one tab to open you up to the idea of doing another 14 <laughs> tabs, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you die? No, you can, you can injure your brain, though, and you could end up with syndromes like this, no doubt. Uh, so it's possible that it's an organic brain injury from all the acid possible that he this is the beginning of a schizophreniform or schizophrenic disorder wow. it's possible he's bipolar in a manic phase it's possible this is some other drug reaction it's possible it's some organic problem that needs to be evaluated but Naved you've got to see a doctor it is crucial and what did they tell you um their results they don't think I'm like because it's not like I hear like bad voices or like anything like I hear you guys actually in a way but um what did they say you have they say I have a disorder that I was born on. with. That you were born with. Yeah. And what are they, What name did they put to it? Uh, I can't hear it because it's not like I can hear everything. It's just every so often. What name did they put to it? I don't know. I can't hear it. And uh, it's. Well, uh, let me ask you this, Naved. Yes. If I said it, would you be able to hear it? Yes, but it, it's different though. It's what they explain my disorder as is like I hear things as mm-hmm. like not as they're <clears> said. <throat> Okay, but what if they just, what if they wrote it down and handed it to you on a piece of paper and you read it? Would you understand what your affliction is? No, not here. Only I, if somebody, uh, only if somebody here would. I, I have friends that only hear what they want to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, those are actresses, so that's yeah, different. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it's narcissism. It's different. <laughs> Naved. Yes. I'm going to ask that question again because I'm not quite sure if I got an answer. If if I if your doctor wrote down what your condition was on a piece of paper and handed it to you and you read it, would you comprehend what you have? Uh, it's hard to explain. It's not that easy. I can always stump crazy people. Thank you. Um, it's. Well, would you understand it? Yes and no. At the same time, because kind of double- I, if I wrote schizoid down on a piece of paper and handed it to you, and you read schizoid, would you hear schizoid? Would you see schizoid? Would you understand that that was my yes. diagnosis? Yes. Okay. So the answer is yes. Right? Sure. What did the doctor put <laughs> there? What did the doctor say? You had? What did he say? He didn't say I had anything. He just said. What I, kind uh, of doctor did you see? Um, I saw a therapist and a psychiatrist. Okay. And right. they didn't say you had anything. Well, they said I just. I had, like, other problems, but this didn't have to do with it. They didn't suggest you take any medication? Um, I was on Xanax for a little while, but that's it. Did they think you were having a post-hallucinogenic perceptual disorder, a reaction to the the, the acid? Uh, no. Okay. All right, so, Naved, yes. you're fine then, according to you, right? No, I'm not, because I'm thinking I'm going crazy, but I, I don't... All right, well, then you have to go back, and you have to ask them for a diagnosis, and you have to read it this time. And a treatment. And a treatment. It's medication, maybe. That, that's what you need. You really okay. Do. That's what corrects these, these feelings. And the, you don't have to be miserable like this. Okay? It's not the answer I was looking for. Well, what were you looking for? Uh, the, the, well, I was trying to explain... Take your bitch to Hawaii? No, I was trying to explain what it, like, what... I think it actually is. What you think, unfortunately... Right, but why should we listen to you? Yeah, it's not, of, it's not of use to spin your wheels about what you think it is right now. People don't diagnose themselves to that. Right. They don't. That, that's a foolish thing to try to do. Well, you could if you stepped on something, but not, not no. when something's going on in your head. You really, I don't do it. When it comes to my family or myself, 
Don't even try. Oh, that's such a load of crap. No, it is. It isn't. You diagnose you yourself be, every ten minutes. You can't be objective about whatever you're doing. I mean, when it comes to yourself, your family, you just you just see, when your kid starts hacking something up, you know what's going on. Yeah, but I shouldn't be. Your judgment doesn't work right. It just doesn't. But I'm a carpenter. I can't work on my own house. It's different. I'm too connected with my door. It's different. I'm, bi- I'm biased toward the hinges. I can't Don't get touch enough the door. Get back touch the door. and talk to the, the team you were talking to, the doc- team of doctors that are taking care of All right, Naved, we don't want to cut you off, but it's no use uh, listening to what you have to say right now. Take care of yourself. Go to the doctor. Listen to the doctor. No more acid. And no more acid. Okay? Sure. Okay. I know you're depressed, but this is the way to do it. Telling us about it is not going to fix it. No. you got to go to the therapist, right? Okay. What you say? All right. Well, don't give me that depressed crap. Come on. Well, I'm not giving you depressed crap. He's not I'm depressed. Giving you He's giving you. Well, listen, you, you, you're in an alternate universe. I understand. No, you don't understand. All right. I'll give you 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. It's like this. Uh, I hear things. I hear what you're saying, but you're saying it differently than the way I understand it. That's what I think is, that's what I know is wrong with me. That's what they tell me is wrong with me there. Okay. And, um... So I hear actually your voice. I hear as a uh, uh, Dr. Drew, and Dr. Drew's voice I hear is Adam Carolla. You're not going to understand this at all. But who am I? Then who? Who? Uh, I don't. You don't even know who I am. I don't even know. Uh, I don't even know who I am. Okay. You said you see things that aren't there too. Uh, no, that's only like I sleep and then I wake up and it's kind of like a dream state, and I just remember like little portions. Yeah, see, okay. all, this all sounds like what's something that's called the post hallucinogenic perceptual disorder. All right, Naved, we've heard you out. Which which should get better actually. With time, we're we're not going to change our story though. Go to the psychiatrist and talk to them about it. All right. All right. All right. Wow, fifteen, fifteen. Uh, LLC is acid. such a dangerous drug. My God. Let me explain. This is clearly evident. <clears throat> Let me explain what our callers do too. And this, by the way, Naved, relatively same for the, no- <laughs> for for the people who call this show. Uh, they get really pissed. They, they're so, it probably happens maybe once uh, every third night where someone says, you're not letting me ask my question. You're not letting me explain myself. Let's say about maybe once a week this happens. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And I always think to myself, no, nah, I've heard everything you have to say. That's right. And they go, no, you know, you don't understand. You're not. Uh, That's right. And then I always, I always give in and I go, okay, you've been on hold for 75 minutes. Right. Go ahead. Explain your problem. Right. And... Without Inevitably, exception. Without, without exception. exception, they'll explain it Doesn't the first change. way the exact they explain it. Right. Yeah. Uh, Naved's, the way he described his problem, he described it 20 minutes into the call, exactly, exactly the, the same. same. Yeah, I, I get that as a clinician all the time, too, because when you see and hear things I, a million times, you, you, all you need is a snippet, and you know what you're dealing with. I mean, but and people that, want to tell you their whole story, because it's special, it's theirs. No one else has ever experienced this before. Right. But you know what? Millions of people have seen right. it thousands of times. Wake up. Yeah, it's really and, weird. Oh, I'm sorry, Sean. No, no, don't go ahead. Go ahead. And I was going to say, it doesn't work <laughs> that way in other aspects of life. Like, when you pull into the mechanic and you go, the, the car's starting to squeak and it pulls toward uh, the left, and the guy goes, Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, you got a, you, you blew out a caliper on your left side. It's either that or your slave cylinder. You don't go, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, but listen no. to me. Sometimes, <laughs> it's my car. When I'm pulling up on my stop sign, and just the other day, no, you go, Oh, good. Whew. So it's no, how much? Right. You, exactly. you want to get to it real quick. You exactly. go, all right, you know what it is? Good. I'm leaving. I I'll some, pick it up when I'm done. Wrong with our, our sort of national uh, consciousness. Each one of us is special and unique, and no other human being will ever or has ever experienced what we experience. Well, definitely not what that guy mm. experienced. Oh, the, Drew has uh, experienced that many times. Yes, it's That's very true. amazing, though. I mean, he, uh, we, we sound like I didn't really understand. Yeah, what so it's all a perceptual alteration. That's crazy. Yeah. True, you'd have to. There's an organic John, you quality. ever taken mushrooms? This, uh, Once. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you get really hurt? I felt like I weighed 10,000 pounds. Oh, I, yeah. But I laughed my ass off. Oh. Okay, quickly go to Cindy and then we'll go to break. Okay. Yeah, my side hurts. Cindy? Cindy. Yeah. What's going on? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my question is about masturbation. Um, I heard uh, producer Ann come on a couple of years ago and describe how to um, do it in the bathtub. And so I tried it, and I sort of um, got hooked, and I do it a lot. Um, yeah, look what you'd caused here. Right. Yeah, Cindy? Yeah. What's so the question? You got hooked on it? Right. And I think that I 
I overdo it. I mean, I know a lot of guys call in and you tell them that it's perfectly normal, but I don't know. I don't know whether it's something to do, like, psychologically, whether... All right, all right. We got to go to break. We do. Okay. So hold on a second. And uh, we will explore this. Anne got her hook. Yeah. And wow. I heard that about Anne. Anne's the only, uh, uh, the only uh, 28-year-old woman with a wrinkled vagina. Holy <laughs> Spends so much time in the water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll uh, take ourselves a little break, and then we'll uh, talk to Cindy. Love line, Matt and Carl and Doctor Drew. The phone number is one eight hundred Love one nine. This is Love Line. We're going to take a little ten second station identification break, and we'll be back in a mere ten seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. Illegal broadcasters. 92.1 KFMA, Green Valley, Tucson. Hey. That sounds like a porno. Yeah, it is kind of a porn, oh porn soundtrack, yeah. yeah. Sean Hayes is here from uh, Will and Grace, Monday nights, 9.30, NBC, soon to be moved to Thursday nights, 9.30, NBC, and that'll be in a couple of weeks. Thank God it's not 9.30 like another network. Yeah, and uh, and probably in January. Oh, okay. So that's coming up. And yeah. uh, I'm sure there'll be lots of uh, promotion for that. Yes, there will be. Hopefully. How uh, how are your co-stars on that show? They're awesome. Uh, Deborah Messing, Eric McCormick, and Megan Mullally. There's four of us. And uh, they're, they're cool. Cooler than, you know, cool beans. They getting attitudes yet? <laughs> No, you know out. what the nice thing about it is, is nobody, nobody's got, you know, nobody's like a big star or a big name. So yeah, someday kinda... they'll have to go to their therapist, too, and say, yeah, it's, yeah, let's talk about what an asshole you are. Now. Yeah, right. Uh. Right. <laughs> oh, they should only have that kind of success where they get to go to their therapy and talk about Yeah, right. <laughs> talk about what a-holes they become. Cindy. Yes. <clears throat> so, you're 23. Mm hmm You were listening to the show a few years ago. Yeah. Ann was explaining the, the virtues of the tub. Mm hmm we call this Wilkinsonism. Right. And uh, you listened to her. Yeah. You, you masturbated in the tub. Mm -hmm. What technique do you use? In the tub? Mm hmm Well, it's pretty straightforward. Just uh, get down there? Right. Do you have a, a handheld device? No, no. It's just with the spout. Anne is actually taking it to a new level. Uh, at first, she just started with the spigot. Then she moved to the handheld device with the four or five foot hose on it. But she realized she couldn't get her errands done. She couldn't move about the house. She actually has a remote water unit now mm -hmm. that she uses. She has a big tank in her back, water, high <laughs> pressure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually, it's not a tank, but she'll plug it into jacks around the house. Well, like, like the vacuum. Like yeah. the vacuums they have in certain houses. Her, her house is spotless. She'll carry the, uh, it's sort of a, it's made by uh, Teledyne, I think, the company that makes a water pick. And she'll just plug it into a socket, which watching TV, in the kitchen, where, where have you? But, but Anne is into the There's higher... There's plastic all over all of my furniture. Well, all the floors were done like uh, the gorilla cage at the zoo. They slope into a main drain in the center. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's cement. <laughs> you can pee, you can crap, you can vomit. Right, right, they just Cindy. hose it right hey. down. Cindy, what's the question? <laughs> what is the question? My question is, you know how you're always saying that what we do now is largely influenced by what happened in our past? Yes. And I don't, I don't remember anything happening, like my parents, like sexually molesting me or anything. But when I masturbate, I feel like it's very obsessive, and um, I have these fantasies of being raped and by like monsters or demons, and I, I, I do it frequently. Like I do it as using it as a comfort mechanism, sort of. And fantasizes about the Culligan man. <laughs> huh? What do you mean a comfort mechanism? I mean that I do it to make myself feel better. You, you masturbate to feel better. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with the monsters? Oh, that. I thought maybe it was connected to something that happened when I was little, but I don't remember. Wait, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. You. What do you think happened when you were little? I know you said nothing, but it seems like you think something may have happened. Yeah, I'm afraid something did happen. No. Well, you. No. No? Well, mm -hmm. you'd remember it, wouldn't you? How have your relationships been? I haven't had any relationships. Oh. Never? Never. Drew, you've changed your story now, haven't no. you? I didn't change it. Eating disorder? Yes. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. This Drew. is Drew. Yeah. 
Drew got right onto that eating disorder. Look at that. Um, <laughs> Sean could care less. Yeah, I'm looking at these cookies, thinking about eating. Sean's great. Look at that. Were you were you bulimic specifically? I, yeah, I over. Yeah. Bulimics often be, uh, there, there's a high incidence of sexual compulsivity with bulimia, so it's part of your bulimic syndrome, really. And this sort of lack of development of self and self nurturing capacities that are mature is, to my estimation, a big part of eating disorders. And you, you know, I, I, a lot of people we talk to anyway are, are children that are products of over intrusive parenting, sort of the way we sort of generalize it. That your parents were sort of over-involved with you and they had their own narcissistic needs and never identified you as a separate person and never gave you the kind of nurturing needs that you needed to develop a separate self with the capacity to be independent without being overwhelmed by frightening thoughts and overwhelming feelings and these things that, that really were your parents that you were taking on. Okay? Okay. And then you develop an eating disorder as just a symptom of a way of controlling some of those. Some people, I, one way of conceptualizing it is, is being sort of a... a a denying parent, a parent that is a, you know. Drew had this over intrusive parents. Mine were different. Mine would be like, Adam, what's going on in there? <laughs> I'm experimenting with napalm, Mom. <laughs> um, all right, we'll take the garbage out before the, uh, the night the trash man comes at 5.30 in the morning, you know. So, Sandy, this is more part of the eating disorder. How's your eating disorder doing? It's, it goes on and off. You've been treated? No. All right. Well, that's, let's talk about that. That's that's where you focus your attention, right there. Yeah. Go get treated for the eating disorder. Don't don't get worried on this one little symptom. The big picture is. And then that, the masturbation you know, will come and 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 be enjoyable. Probably. That's right. It will make sense. It won't be compulsive. <clears throat> and it will be something you like doing. True. I know this isn't a, a pretty or flattering thought, but every time I talk to a woman who's um, you know into her twenties and says she's never had a relationship, I always picture a big woman. Hmm. Now, is it the weight that's keeping them out of the relationship or is that the reason they put the weight on you know what i'm saying i think it's more the latter you're saying in mo most cases they put the weight on they're keeping people away to keep themselves out of the game because uh -huh. there are plenty of heavy women that have relationships god knows all you got to do is turn on uh, springer <laughs> <laughs> and those are healthy relationships poor skinny black guys with huge white women <laughs> yeah right but they're having it oh they're having a lot of relationships oh, yeah. they're having relationships there's plenty for, for yeah yeah plenty to go around <laughs> and then that's what happens yeah it is true all all you women who think you're a little too big for the game no 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 there are plenty of guys who have plenty of relationships the with game's you. too big for the women as a matter of fact you know it's funny i'm trying to think about it I would say that big, big husky men probably have more of a problem, but do less complaining about it. Or it, it's a less perceived problem, but it's just as big. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, if mean, you, you show me a woman who's um, 250 pounds. Men are much more willing. You show me a guy who's 300 pounds, and the woman will say, "Well, you know, I'm I'm not dating because of the weight. Uh, men aren't dating because of the weight either, really, are they?" They just don't really say think anything about, about it. Way, yeah. Never really thought about yeah, it, but pretty... they're probably... I mean, it's not like uh, they're running around with a bunch of models either, are mm -hmm. they? Unless they're feeding them the nose candy. <laughs> the booger sugar. That's what I call cocaine. <laughs> booger right. sugar. Is that uh, Kareen? Yeah. You're 18? Yep. What's going on? Um, I was molested by my brother when I was younger. My sister was, too. And um, I was just wondering, like, my boyfriend's step sister is acting the same way towards her brother as I did towards mine. And I'm wondering, like, just like she doesn't ever want to be around him. She has two brothers, and she doesn't act this way to both of them, just to one. Mm. Is the one your boyfriend? No. Okay. No. How, how did you act toward your brother who molested you? Just really, I guess, I just never wanted to be near him. And when I was forced to, like, sit by him in the car or something, I just, like... Do you talk to him now? Yeah. yeah. You do? Do. You, do, you, do you listen to our show very much? Yeah. Does it surprise you that you would get involved with a family that has similar kinds of problems to your own? Does it... Does it... What now? Like, does it surprise me that I'm involved with a family? Well... I don't know. It's a surprise I mean, when you find out about it, but when you step back and think about it, is it that surprising? I, I guess. It sort of fits, doesn't it? 
You'd find your way into something like that. <laughs> Drew can never get anyone to go along with him on anything. <laughs> I mean, Adam I asked, asked the question. Him, but he's not really like... Did you ever wonder... Yeah, but it's, it's the, you're, you're getting in with a family that's just like your own. Well, my boyfriend doesn't live with that family. They live in a different state. Uh -huh. Be that as it may, it's the same yeah. system that he comes out of that you came out of. It's odd that I, I didn't even know about that when I got involved with him. R right. Yeah. It's magical. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. how we find these things. We find our way into these situations. Yeah. Instincts. Listen, by the way, all you uh, screwballs out there who uh, say, listen, I didn't know the guy was an alcoholic before I met him and all yeah, that. Yeah. If you can take a few women and they can sync <laughs> up all their periods... <laughs> uh, knowing the guy was an alcoholic or not knowing Small is task. child's play. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's uh, like when your uncle would pull that quarter out of your ear. <laughs> that's what. That's how easy that trick is. <laughs> Believe me, there's a lot going on on a lot of different levels, and and this is an easy one. Uh, Kareen? Yeah. So, so there you go. How long did your brother molest you? I only remember once. He did more with my sister. Mm -hmm. And why are you talking to him, or have you have you aired this out with him? No, not with him. With, with who? my sister, I have. We both talked about it, and she well, my, she told my mom, and my mom took her to like a psychiatrist, and once, and the psychiatrist said she had to write down everything she remembered, uh. and my sister was like young and cried and said she didn't want to go back, and my mom never made her, uh. which mm. really makes me angry with my mom. You this know, your like, well, that was they know what they're doing. That's what they knew would help her. And this your biological brother? Yeah, that probably was a very healthy statement from Corinne right there. You catch that? Yeah. yeah. So you can take direction. You can listen to people in authority. And that, that'll really help you. It really will. And how old is your sister? She's 22. And how old is the brother? 25. And does he have kids? No. <laughs> He's a pothead. Still mm -hmm. lives with mom. I love hearing you guys joke about that stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Your mom mm -hmm. still has got that, uh, that stoner molester living there. Huh? <laughs> Maybe the marijuana has <laughs> done the trick. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Listen, Drew talks about uh, marijuana and, you know, how evil it is on occasion. Mm -hmm. I say this is a good thing because here's a guy who is basically 25. He's living at home. He's getting stoned. He's uh, watching Dukes of Hazard all day. <laughs> he'd, he'd get a boner, but uh, it's too much effort. And he ain't getting laid. He's not going to repopulate. He's right. not going to have any other screwball kids who are going to go out and molest other people. He's just going to live at home he, until mom he, kicks he's off. He's harmless. If it weren't for the pot, he'd be thinking about going out and having some oh, other children. If, I, he, if he were getting drunk yeah. or doing coke, yeah. he'd be out. At least he's not harming others. I, I would suggest that everybody watch Dukes of Hazard and smoke a joint. No, I, I do, I, too. We, uh, I, what, was it? what band was that? that uh, House of Pain? No. Mm. No, although House of Pain too. But you're thinking of Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill. Uh, they, they. Uh, it was when I, I mean, we've known them over the years, and they were the most sort of amped up, hostile, angry guys. Yeah. Marijuana took care of that. Yeah. They, they're now like uh, it's, docile, it's, it's the quiet. All answered in uh, so, everything. So, so there's always a bright side to these habits, I suppose. But uh, I wouldn't recommend it for somebody who's otherwise healthy. I know. Mel is you out. That's what we could use. Renata. <laughs> Hello. And men start growing breasts eventually, according to Drew, which is, uh, hey, more breasts for me. That's the way I look at that. <laughs> I mean, finally, finally. I have to go out now. <laughs> finally, you and Jimmy will get together. <laughs> oh, yeah, if I can get my uh, boy toy to uh, start smoking weed, <laughs> we can shack up. Renata? Hello. Come here, bitch. What's going on? Um, A couple weeks ago, my best friend stayed at my house for the weekend, and we got kind of high together. Because you can get really high or just kind of high? Well, it was like after it was starting to wear off. Mm -hmm. What and happened? She just like came over and started to try to make out with me and she fronts me. And so ever since then, whenever I see her, I get really uncomfortable and I don't really know how I'm supposed to talk to her anymore. What drugs were you doing? Um, Actually, it was off of my dad's inhalers. Inhalers? Wow. Inhalers? What's he inhaling? Like bronchial and things? Well, um, I don't know, but I heard him say that it has, like, adrenaline in it. Oh, my God. You were taking it over, the, like, primatine? I think so. You, you, that's how that model sister died. Oh, she was such a piece of ass, I mean, too. You, you can, was you that can, Nikki Taylor's right, uh, sister? sister? Oh, my God. I cried that day. My God. I mean, she no, was 17 is, and made is, uh, uh, Nikki Taylor look like uh, just a... A sack of horseshoes. I mean, she was so good looking. 
That was such a tragedy. It's always a tragedy when good-looking people die. It's really, it's a much greater tragedy than when the uh, ugly die. They should, they should have a, a holiday for every time a person, every time like, uh, a model dies. dies. It's a no, national not, holiday. Th- th- this is not something that gets you high. This gets you all sped up. And, uh, well, that's God high. Knows. Well, it's not. It's not a, that kind of high. But not like not I'm so sped high, up. So I need to French my best friend. Yeah, not usually. But you could have either. You could have easily died through that experience. Oh, easily. Okay, I mean, you can only handle so much of that stuff. Wasn't wasn't, uh, and I think it was Nikki Taylor's sister who was uh, model. That happened about three or four years ago At now. Least, yeah. Wasn't she asthmatic or something though? Yeah. I don't. She wasn't just yeah. huffing away. No, she was using she it was... therapeutically. But those inhalers, to my estimation, should not be used. The over the counter ones. No, not by an adult. And she was an adult. Why shouldn't they be used by an adult? Because a kid, little kids can handle the adrenaline burden. The, they can. Uh, adults cannot. They will die. Well, she was 17 or 18. It's an adult. It's an adult. She's not, not nine, not six. Wow. Wow, that's one of the few medications you you say is good for a kid, not good for it, a, an adult. And it's bizarre that it's over. I, I don't understand its availability over the counter. They really don't. Really? I, I, I don't understand. Is that, that like primatine? I, I don't want to say anything bad about the product because some people may help it, but it is dangerous for most adults, and particularly older adults, is out of the, out of the question. Yeah, I heard it's speedy. Yeah, well, it, it, it doesn't. All the other inhalants have what are called cardioprotective properties or, or beta selective properties. They go just to the lung. This one goes, it's adrenaline, goes to the vasculature, the heart, everything, and it causes rhythm problems. Yeah, that uh, oh, heart well, it makes you French. Can't get the four, uh, are you 486 in this country? Well, huh? now we can tell her about her friend. Confront her friend, talk to her. Don't let it go. Uh, just, you know, you really, all you got to use my you, method of relationships, which is pretend nothing happened and sweep everything under the carpet and I was, just I was, make I was nice. say the opposite. You, you want to confront her? I, really? I would say go ahead and just talk to her about it and it's just feel gross for about a minute or two and then move on. But don't you think, I mean, and here's my theory, and I've always, I've always used this in, in life. That's why I'm at the therapist telling. I was going to say this is such narcissistic into. crap. You're oh, throwing shit. out of here. Shut Drew's mic off. <laughs> Had enough of him. <laughs> and did you get that shit? Try your mic. Okay, good. <laughs> talk, talk to Sean it's, for a second. It's totally off. Here's the way. I've, I've had a lot of weird stuff go down in my life, you know? Mm-hmm. And what I do, I mean, not, not bizarre, not molestation kind of weird, but just, uh, you know, there's been uh, some weird things. Uncomfortable things. I find that if you sort of just business as usual, it's weird. It's uncomfortable the first few times you're with the, the person. Yeah. But uh, after a few weeks goes by, eh, they stop yeah. thinking about it. You stop thinking about it. Don't get yourself back into the situation. Yeah, don't I guess don't right. renew it, but you don't necessarily have to relive it either. Right. Ooh. Oh, Drew's mic's yeah. back on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Drew. Is some need for judgment in these areas. There are some things better left undealt with, but... In general, that's, for- that's, a, that's a load of narcissistic crap. Oh, please. <laughs> uh, not making the other person uncomfortable is a load of narcissistic crap. No, but crap. just sort of letting it not not speaking your true feelings. Because well, then, carry- well, then, kinda- then you carry it around with you for a long time. And, that's right. Yeah, that's and right. instead of getting bad. it out... Getting because then, then they'll call the show and just, say, I've carried around this you, crap inside of right, me. Right, you have feelings, and uh, you have a right to I think it's narcissistic know. to burden someone else with your feelings. If it's a burden, but if it's something that needs to be of just... Of course sort of, the person's going to be uncomfortable. Don't say anything. It'll all go away in a few months. Right. Uh, That's what I say. 14. If she tries it again, you bring it up. Then bring it up. Right. And say something like, remember when this happened right. last time? Something like that? Baron. Yes. You're 19. Yes, I am. What's going on? What's happening, Barrett? Um, I uh, it's <laughs> kind of hard to explain. Um, I'm not really what you might call gifted in <laughs> the old you know, penal region. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of a little short. Mm-hmm. And I was just wondering about you know like a penis pump or something. Mm-hmm. Where'd uh, where'd you get the name Baron with a small penis? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. Calling a fat guy stretch or something. <laughs> uh, right. I I mean I don't I don't I don't really get it. I mean it's kind of hard for me. I'm a I'm a big guy. I mean. Oh, that's worse. I'm not not like big. I'm six two, close to two hundred. Yeah. And what size is the penis? Well. <laughs> That's the two. Let's just say, uh, most guys would take out a driver, <laughs> golf, 
in golf terms. Put a ball on it, have yeah. you lie down? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm swinging with a putter. Oh, okay, I thought it was the size of a tee. That's where that I was man? working. Ooh, oh, hey, listen, oh, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> His dick's the size of a putter. He's it's like a small uh, penis. As opposed to a, 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 a wood? I mean, what? Yeah. What? It's supposed to be nine uh, Baron, how many inches is your penis? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. Look, uh, why'd you call the show if you didn't want to talk about your all dick? All right, all right. It's, it's four. Four? Yeah. Another golf term. <laughs> <laughs> and your balls are right under it. See? There's a lot of golf going on here. Have you uh, tried golfing? Yes, I have. Uh, four is uh, small, but it, you can work with it. Uh, okay. Well, listen, here's the deal, Baron. Most women do not require a large penis. Yeah. Right? I've, I've actually been laughed at before. I mean, it's not... No, you haven't. Yes, I have. No. Why, a hooker? <laughs> no. Who, your girlfriend? What girl I'm, actually laughed at not your like, penis? I'm not, I'm not talking about... You know, a bust up laugh. I'm talking just a snicker. Making fun of you know, it. Like bit. trying to hide it. It's. Yeah, but you got to understand if you're real self conscious about something <laughs> and you. Uh, okay, I bet if Baron, Baron's the kind of guy where Baron has sex with somebody and then an hour and, later and, the and phone come. rings and the girl's talking on the phone and she, yeah, uh huh, and she starts laughing, he's going to assume they're talking about his penis because right. yeah, he's yeah. real self conscious. You've got to release it. that stuff into the universe and just, uh, right. you know, don't, yeah, because people can sense that. Baron, did she, did she really comment on the size of your penis? It, 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 she suggested it to me that I should actually try penal enlargement. And I came across penis pump. Oh, these women should be hunted down and killed like animals. <laughs> they really should. They do not realize. I mean, hold on. We've got to talk about you for a second. Poor Baron, you know, he's 18 and a half. Yeah, he's, he's already has, he's sort of already on the fence about the penis. I'm sure people have told him, man, don't worry about it. Chicks don't mind. Right. Then he gets hooked up with one crazy he gets, bitch. Right, the one crazy she one. She says huh? that, and he is <laughs> ruined, man. I mean, you might as well, you might as well just take a, a, a stiletto and just carve that right into it, the back of a cerebellum, you know? He's ruined. It's carved in. Maybe he'll get some growth up to 21. That's one possibility. Oh, please. Try. How much did your Johnson 18? grow between 19 and 21? Some people. <laughs> Just some people. No one's penis grows between 19 and 21. No, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, little. Yeah. I mean, you keep talking. Listen, and, and by the way, if it's if it's seven inches, you're lucky to get an eighth out of it. Right. At four inches, uh, you're You're like, not getting like four more. Yeah, like 330 seconds tops. <laughs> Tops, that's uh, outside. You get to check the percentages. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. All right. Baron? Yeah. All right. You're fine. You, you need the right woman. You double down on the oral sex. <laughs> that's fine. You just got, you really got, you got hooked up with a crazy, crazy yeah. bitch. You really did. <laughs> okay. Well, what, well, what, like, is there any downsides to a penis pop? Supposedly? Yeah, they're expensive. They don't work and you waste a lot of time. They don't work? Well, they do temporarily. Yeah, yeah, look, haven't you seen the pictures in the ad? It shows the guy. I mean, you got to, like, oh, do wait. it and then take it off right away and then do her and then it's... Take it off. Right. You and leave it. Strength, I right? leave it on. <laughs> That's where you really get some girth in there. <laughs> yeah, right. It's good uh, eighth-inch plastic on both sides, and it's graduated, so it gives her that sort of ribbed feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Those ads are ridiculous. It's a great condom. they got a picture of the same uh, one guy... Yeah, after he just got out of the pool, and right. then the same guy with the boner. Right. <laughs> you know, right. Well, it's miraculous. <laughs> it's like a 70% larger. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you imagine being the guy with the, uh, the guy in the ad? The before? Oh, well, it's the same guy. It's oh, right. they one, can't use one's two, in Antarctic. Uh, Drew, use your brain. You can't use, people aren't that high. <laughs> two different penises. The second one's black. Yeah, it's all computerized. <laughs> No, they got they got a guy. It's usually some guy you recognize from a porn movie. And he, there he is, sort of flaccid. And now he's got a boner. And you go, all right, it works. But Drew, <clears throat> men will believe anything. Drew um, has told me about a device for guys that are impotent. That you put it on, it works like a suction device. It sucks all the blood to the penis, and then you put this clip right at the base of the penis to keep the oh, blood man. keep the blood in. That can't be the helpful. clamp. Snaps on. Oh, it does? Oh, yeah. How big is it? It's it's small, but it, it's it's like a rubber. So, uh, so all the blood stays in there? It releases and somehow snaps on there. Wow. It's at the base of the tube that does the vacuuming. 
Well, give me one of those. Oh, it's on the base of the tube? That's how I understand it. Oh, and then you slide the tube off. So it's like nothing can escape. Because it's like uh, you're like at a clown at a party and you're blowing the balloons up. <laughs> and you can't just move your mouth and hang on the balloon and talk to the kids. And <laughs> like you got to immediately grab it and pinch it off. That can't be healthy. Well, listen, when you when you haven't got a boner in yeah, 10 yeah. years, you don't you're not worried about a Viagra, little yeah, little Viagra's pressure on the heart. Wow. Care of all that, so. Okay. Let's take a break, please. All right, we'll do that. Yeah. Uh when we come back, we'll talk to Joe. Uh, More penis talk. Like. Nah, I don't want to, I'm done with the penis for at least 5 minutes. You want to pick another call? Stephanie. Mm. All right, she thinks she's a nymphomaniac. She's 18. Let me just check something. Stephanie? Yeah. You good looking? Uh I've been told that. Okay, that's good. All right, she's 18. She's an infomania. She's good looking. We'll be back. I feel so liquidy. Really? Why? You're listening to Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, I'll be right back. Hey, Loveline, it's Adam Carolla. Hey, Loveline, it's Dr. Drew. Hey, Loveline, it's Adam Carolla. Hey, it's the love line. Sean Hayes is here from Will and Grace. Monday nights, 9.30, NBC. Soon to be seen Thursday nights, 9.30, NBC. And uh, one of the, uh, well, actually, as I've said this a few times, but now uh, I sound like a liar. I was going to say that uh, one of the few um, sitcoms that's doing well, but there's probably two or three other ones. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, Hughley's. Doing all right, mm -hmm. I guess. You mean you talking new, new shows? Yeah, new new uh, sitcoms. Yeah, Hughley's. Uh, we're doing obviously pretty good, and um, what's the other one? A uh, sports night. Yeah, it's doing well. Did they uh, did ABC cancel that uh, Fantasy Island yet? Yeah, they did, I think. And um, Cupid. Cupid's get, on Saturday night. That it, get, it does really well. I thought they were gonna. I thought they're gonna pull that. They yeah. shoot it in Chicago, actually. Which? Yeah. Cupid with Jeremy Piven. What is it? Got to look into that. It's a modern-day Cupid. Yeah, it's like an, it's an hour long. He's a... It's on Saturday night. Psych patient thinks he's Cupid oh, or something. <laughs> 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 Drew doesn't like it when, uh, you know, sort of clinically insane people are portrayed in a good light. <laughs> TV's great because you have Good people. is fine. Romantic is bothers me. You can have people that are nuts and uh, still holding down good jobs and getting laid. Uh, it's great. It's back in the old days. I, I was telling Drew, you know, I, I miss the days when crazy people all thought they were Napoleon. That That's TV's version of sort of crazy people. <laughs> they march around with that big flat hat on. Right. All right. He thinks he's Cupid, Drew. Now, the reality is that the guy in, in real he life, is. if there's a guy who thinks he's Cupid, he's cutting on himself. Right. right. And he's crying while he masturbates. And he's calling us. And, and he's, he's got his dookie bucket. And he's got the dookie bucket right near, <laughs> right near the bed where he can step in it in the middle of the night when he's got to take a leak. <laughs> Stephanie. Hi. So you're 18, you think you're a nympho? I'm, yeah, pretty much. Yeah? Uh, I guess probably talk about what happened, I guess. Well, she doesn't well, have happened. the little girl voice, but she has the seasoned voice. Yes. Nice. Right. So I've been around the block. Talk about what happened. Well, end of my senior year, I graduated in June. I got in a relationship for three months with this guy and it ended really really badly and i was i was hurt and everything and after a while of being hurt i decided you know i'm not gonna get in a relationship for a really long time because it's hard for me to trust guys now mm. and ever since then that was like in august when i decided that and i've gotten in, in four different sex not like sexual relationships deal uh -huh. and now so with the most recent guy, I really do like him, and it's, and I really, I think that he thinks that there's no strings attached at all. That I'm just there for a good time whenever he wants. But how's this behavior making you feel about yourself? It's, just I say guess. bad, would you, Stephanie, so we can move on? <laughs> well, I mean, I just, I want to, like, I want to be able to stop this because I was never like this before. Huh. And hey, Stephanie. Yeah. How does this behavior make you feel about yourself? I, I probably end up regretting it to, to some extent. All right, so uh, we'll go with bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. It's not we, working. We, we, could, we could do the show in 17 minutes. I could be home by 1030 every night. I mean, you're acting out to try to avoid things and ending up hurting yourself by doing it. Right? You're trying to avoid feeling bad, avoid intimacy, avoid 
vulnerability. And instead, you're becoming vulnerable, feeling worthless, making contact that doesn't feel good, doesn't help you feel better, doesn't do any of the things you're looking for. Why don't you try the old way again? I like it a lot, though. That's the problem. You like the attention. We like the validation and stuff, but now here we are. And ultimately, you're right back where you started from with the same feelings being initiated. And that's okay. But it happened in a circumstance in which you may not be able to see the relationship through. Where do you find the guys? Well, it's guys that I I meet at parties. I I go to frat parties. I meet people there. I meet people at school. I meet just... I'm really outgoing. I really meet guys easily. No, no kidding. Yeah. Listen, if you're... A, Adam wants to know when the next party is. <laughs> yeah, when's the next kegger? <laughs> next kegger? That was... I don't know. <laughs> hey, if you're a halfway attractive woman and you want to go to a frat party and get laid, you can get laid... Mm, I'm trying to think of the ages. You could probably get laid from uh, 15 to maybe 45. Uh-huh. Every weekend for the rest of your life. Do you realize that? <laughs> If you're yeah. just if you're just if you're a woman who's just a good solid five, uh, on your fifteenth birthday you could go down to the uh, the, the uh, Sama uh, Paka Fudja <laughs> fraternity. I'll write that down, Drew. I'm gonna write that one. That's a good one. And you could get laid that Friday, and you could show up the next weekend. You could get laid, and you could probably get laid every. I mean, even even on like even war years, even when there's famine, a disaster, earthquake, you could get laid every Friday night for the rest of your life. And it would start dropping off around, I'd say, about your mid forties. But even then, there'd be always be some pledge guy who was good and loaded. <laughs> Come on, Stu, do it. Go hump, 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 hump. They do it. So if you're a woman and you have this, you can keep going. So somebody stops you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You make fraternity boys very happy. No, oh, no kidding. I'm trying to think of uh, a lame analogy, but I'm just going to... Uh, but women well, don't do that, do they? No. If, if they were guys, they would, but they're not. Right. They don't. But they, their, their emotional world gets too involved in it. They either have to be acting something out or it doesn't feel right to them. Yeah. It's funny, though, when people who are in a different position try to act like the person who is in that position... Like, you know, once in a while, guys will go, oh, man, if I were a chick, I would go out to a single bar every night, man. I'd get laid every night. And then if I didn't get laid, I'd, st- I'd go home and I'd stand in front of the mirror and I'd look at myself <laughs> naked. <you know? laughs> it's the same thing. It's, it's like how kids think. Kids yeah. go, oh, man, if I were rich, I would buy, like, a slot car set. <laughs> That was like 10 miles long. And it's like, it, it's the problem is, is that person will never have the money. Right. That's the cruel part of life. You just uh, you, you <laughs> torture yourself that way. Oh, Jen. It's acting funny. Hey, Hi. Hey, you're 17. What's going on? Yep. Okay. I'm seeing this guy who's like 21. And it's kind of a pain in the ass for me because, like, I tried not to see him for a week. And I got totally depressed. He wants to see other people. And, um. How long have you been seeing him? Five. We broke up at, he wanted, you know, he started wanting to see other people at five and a half. Five months. Five months. Five and a half. Five and a half months you were exclusively. Hold on, five and a half? Right. Totally different ballpark. Right, right. Right. Completely different universe. Five months you were exclusive with each other? Yes. Yeah. A little longer than that, but. Five and a half, I'm sorry. We actually started, like, dating at five and a half. Right. And he decided he wanted to see other people. Mm Mm-hmm. And I thought I could handle it, and I was cool with it and everything. And, um. Like, it just, like, my day of the boot just totally hit me, and I got really, really depressed without him. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like I can handle it without him. Like, I've only, I, um, let's say, I have what my friend's mom called cutter disease. Uh-oh. I cut myself when I get depressed because I can't cry. It won't come out. Yeah, that's not cutter disease. It's, it's huh? Not- that's cutting as a symptom of something else. What your friends call cutters disease? Yeah, why the hell would my you... Friend's mom, my friend's mom used to do it. My friend does it, and I wound up doing it probably when I figured it out about eighth grade. All right, Jen? Mm-hmm. Ever need, since... It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a symptom of, of serious psychological distress. Oh, could you catch it from her, or would you have to be depressed? No, no, I have, I have to be depressed, like seriously depressed. Jen? Yes? It's a, it's a serious sign, and it's it? taken very seriously. Okay. And you do not need to be putting labels on it right now. Okay. You need to get some help if you're if you're inclined to self mutilation. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
If you're inclined to self-mutilation, you need to get some help. You keep fading out. If you're inclined to self-mutilation, you need to get some help. Okay. Did you hear uh, that? Yeah, this, I heard this that. guy's done with this relationship. You're not coping. Well, he said that he just... Jen, this yeah. guy's done with this relationship. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and you're not coping. You're I mean, there, with there's the no relationship that's going to work out by, by somebody saying, I want to, you know, you meet other people. <sighs> hey, Jen. Yes. What'd your folks do to you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I've had a wonderful childhood. I don't... I don't I'm don't. i adopted. I don't get along with my mom, but I get along with my dad great. And my mom and I can get along as long as we don't, like... Talk. <laughs> have tips. So the, uh, other than the adoption, you not talking to your mom. It was perfect. The childhood was perfect? Yep. Okay. Yeah, right. I, I suspected maybe life. something in the childhood, but yeah. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> no, my parents are still together and everything. Jen, so far you haven't described anything perfect to us. About what? Mm, Jen. Well, my mom worked night shift, and um, my dad would take me out during the day and stuff. Okay. But other than that, I haven't seen anything else wrong. But, Jen, you cut on yourself. You cut on yourself. Yeah, I have before. Yeah, that's a big problem. Okay. You understand? Yeah. I got to use another one of my an analogies. Okay. It, oh, no, it, here we go. <laughs> uh, it's like when you're standing behind a car and there's a lot of smoke pouring out of the exhaust. I mean, just tons of black smoke pouring out of the exhaust. And you think to yourself, well, is there something wrong with the muffler? Or could it be that the engine is like no, just no, this no. close it's, it's to blowing even, it's out? It's worse than that. It's uh, I figured it out. I have black smoke disorder from my car. Right. I figured it out. Okay. Thank God. You'll go another two hundred thousand miles. Yeah. Well, I have black smoke disorder. Right. You're not even going to make it to the garage before you throw a rod. Or just stand there and inhale all of it. Jen has some serious problems, much more serious than this guy. And if you're cutting on yourself, and God knows. Uh, you shouldn't be getting diagnosed by your uh, goofball friends and their goofball mothers or experts because they cut on themselves. I, I'm telling you, ever since I saw this on Dateline, and I'm not kidding you. So what? I, it's this story about this chick who cuts on herself. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I turn, there's more and more, more and more stories. Well, cutting is very common. Very, very, very common. Is it really? Very, really common. Because the first time I heard it, I was blown away, but now no, I see I've been it's like every it. other, you know, I'm going to that checkout to get... Now you're just aware somebody. of it now. It's very common. Okay. Yeah. But it's serious. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it, it smacks of something wrong in a, in a big way. All right. We're running late. Let me just talk to Vicky for a second. Vicky? Hello. Hi. You're 36? Yes. Keep talking. I want to see if you sound sane or not. Oh, I totally say. I had a question for you. Um, I've had a lot of different experiences in my life, but I've come across this man that I've been dating for about four and a half years. He prefers oral sex over even having intercourse. Mm -hmm. point to where sometimes it gets very challenging on my part because mm -hmm. you know by the time i get around to getting what i'm working for basically you know you're, you're pretty tired and he almost seems to me like if he could go without it he, that's all he would prefer and i was wondering if that was like kind of abnormal so all he wants to do is oral sex on me on him yeah to him He's, oh you on him yeah oh. him receiving of course <laughs> now it makes sense mm -hmm. i was trying to put together a whole elaborate scheme yeah, no. What's your... Uh, Wait, we got to go to break. What's your ethnicity, <laughs> Vicky? Excuse me? What's your ethnicity? Oh, uh, uh, American Indian. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And he's a normal white. Um, he's 41. Okay. Hang on a second there, Vicky. Oh, God. Alcoholism in the tribe? Or the family, I mean? No. Nope. <laughs> no? Nope. Okay. Terrell, we'll get the truth out of you in a second. Hold <laughs> on. We'll take ourselves a little break. We'll get uh, back to Vicky and the oral sex after this. Uh, oh, yeah! Everybody now! The Love Line. Sean Hayes is here from Will and Grace. Monday nights, 9.30 on NBC. Soon to be seen in a couple of weeks on Thursday nights, 9.30. Same like network. January, yes, maybe, if not a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. People uh, open their presents, make their New Year's resos. You guys make New Year's, uh, you don't do that, do you, Drew? Mm -mm. My last year one was to not make any more. That is so original. No! Oh. Did you stop doing those? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, in my head, but I don't share them. Drew has those kind of lame ones, like no, well, I've pledges already to spend so, more time with his kids. <laughs> I'm already so compulsive. Can you imagine if I started lumping stuff on at the yeah. beginning of the year? Like you need something else on your plate. Right. Yeah. And I'm so lazy. I can't. I can't finish any tasks. So, <laughs> Vicky. 
Yes. Uh, 36, you like getting oral sex? No, he. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, boyfriend likes getting he, oral sex. Yeah, even all his pornos that he owns are all oriented around that topic. Mm -hmm. And so I was just wondering if that was unusual because he seems to, I mean, he really gets off on just that alone. Yeah. I mean, there's not a need for much else, but I just thought it was a little extreme, and my, you know, as far as I was, you know, questioning. Does it. he ever service you? Um, occasionally. Occasionally, but not near as much as you do it to him. Well, if he had his way, that's all he'd have done to him. I mean, continuously. Yeah. You know, but I just thought, you know, not that I'm going to bite it off or anything. I just thought it was kind of unusual that that's the sole center of his, his uh, you know. Odd. How long have you been with him? Uh, four and a half years. Yeah. It didn't start this way, though. Mm, uh, well, he's been stuck in that groove for quite a long time, as far as I can tell. Yeah. You know, I mean in that particular mode and I and there's not any any influence of drugs or anything he's just been stuck on that for some reason and I just I wondered if there was any clue or anything as to why it's kind of a mm. I, mean, I know it's a pleasure thing but to be to prefer that over anything else is just I thought was a little unusual there are theories about that I'm really not equipped to answer it but uh, <laughs> no really about what what creates those sorts of uh yeah. Well, you could you could uh, chalk some of it up to just uh, you know everyone has their own preference sexually. They like certain positions. They like certain feats. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm I happen to be an oral sex guy. <laughs> I mean that, that's uh, I if I had it my way that's what I'd do. Yeah. Well, he seems that you know the more the merrier. But it just I just wonder if it was seemed to be an abnormal thing. If Did you, you ever ask him, about it's it? terribly abnormal. And, and just uh, Adam oh, is a please. prime example of please. just how <laughs> pathetic and dysfunctional well, these when you, characters well, can be. Me, well, you know, he could be avoiding an intimacy. That's what I was thinking. Because uh, uh, if you think about it. Um, Having the intercourse is a more intimate yeah. act than just sitting back and getting the oral sex. Right. Yeah, well, he seems to lose interest, though, sometimes during the other part, and that's what blows my mind. He I loses thought. penis interest? Uh, no, during intercourse. It, you know, he kind of loses interest like his, like he's not concentrating or something, but when he's having his cake and eating it, too, it's all fine and dandy. Well, when you say loses interest... It starts going away, yeah. His penis? Yes. You want me to say, yes, he starts losing his uh, his erection. Yeah. Well, I said he's, he starts losing penis interest. Right. <laughs> and you said, no, he just starts looking away and then... Well, no, I meant starts losing... Yeah, okay, well, you, yeah, you got it right. Right. Yeah. But I just thought that was kind of unusual. I, and so I questioned him on it and he just said, well, it's time to... Uh, to make me interested again or something mm. and I didn't know. I thought, figure that was a ploy, you know? Yeah. But, I don't trust this guy. <laughs> What's he do for a living? Uh, right now, uh, he's in a rehab, actually. He's in rehab? Mm-hmm. He's okay. been there for six uh, months. How much did they pay? Six months. Mm -hmm. For what? Uh, for possession charges and uh, uh, paraphernalia charges. Of what? Uh, methamphetamine. So he's an amphetamine addict? Uh, yeah, used to be. Used to be? Mm-hmm. Well, well, before, before they put him in jail. Before he was arrested. Well, it's not... I wouldn't say an addict. Let's be fair, Drew. He is incarcerated. Vicky, amphetamine addicts only do amphetamine typically about three days a week. T typically? Typically. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a severe amphetamine addict. Hmm. Okay. Well, then I would say that he's an addict then. Yeah, of course he is. If yeah. he doesn't get treatment, he'll pick that all up again. And there's no telling. Uh, I mean, all bets are off. He's incarcerated right now? No, he's in a living. He's in a living because he got popped for paraphernalia. Yeah, and uh, he had other various uh, tickets and things like that. But yeah, mm, that's what it was. Yeah, he must have had. had there's a lot more going on than just you of know. Of course. Yeah, of well, course. He, he had a little bit of a record too, right? Slightly. Yeah. I think you stay in reality here. Oh, I am in reality. You're not real. You're well. You're not letting us into that reality then. Well, I don't want to make that. I don't think it's not like a bad guy, but yeah, he has a pass uh, with it, uh, well, he, and there's you know small possession charge, of course. And you do drugs with him? When he was uh, in occasionally. Hmm. You got any kids? No. Oh, oh that is so good. What, state took him away. No, I I have never had any children. Right. Um, I tried to conceive once when I was engaged, and I lost. I had triplets and lost. Huh? Oh my wow. god! So and I wasn't doing any drugs or anything at that time. So and he. It turned out that it was good I didn't marry him anyway, so... Oh, yeah. I've never been married. Well, so. one thing that will not work is his erectile function when he's doing a lot of drugs. So, <laughs> sort of all bets are off. Oh, no, In no, terms no, of I also would... what his behaviors are, again, no... Can't assess when people are strung out on drugs. Now, she wasn't going to bring that part on. 
<laughs> What's yeah, he doing for a living? Away. He's in rehab. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a pretty good gig. How do you get that job? Yeah, right. Oh, Vicky. Believe me, you got bigger fish to fry than this guy's yes. uh, oral sex oh, obsession. Geez. People in a lot yeah, of that's, denial. That's... Listen, re- well, I, uh, oh, let, let's not uh, cast uh, judgment upon this guy he just because he's incarcerated. Paraphernalia. He's not certainly not an addict. He's got, uh, he's got another four and a half months of rehab. <laughs> Six months of rehab's a uh, and then the intercourse of the phenomenal. Phone. Pretty good, pretty good amount of uh, rehab. Phenomenal. Hey, Vicky. Yeah. Do they have conjugal visits at this rehab? Um, he well, no, he can get overnight passes and stuff and leave. Oh, he can. Yeah. Uh huh. And he has a curfew. That's great. He's 40? Uh, 41. 41. That's nice. <laughs> You're 41 and someone's telling you, uh, when the street lights are on, <laughs> you have to come home. You got to be back. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> we, uh, we serve gruel about 6.30 in the <laughs> evening, and uh, your tray better be filled, Pops. <laughs> Please, Pops. Everybody, act like an adult, would you, for Christ's sake? You're 41 years old. You got a curfew. And, Vicky, don't hang around with it. Get Get rid of this guy. Please. Magil. Find somebody who will have intercourse. Oh, thank you. God she miscarried those triplets. Oh. Can you imagine the guy who she was with and what oh. the hell was going I mean, think of those three. Oh. That, that, that she would have been my mom's uh, Mabley in uh, <laughs> 20 years from now. <laughs> think about it. I mean, think about the criminals that Vicky would have given birth to. Oh, yeah. All right, what do you say? We you say go. we're done? Yeah, we got a break. Uh, let me just talk to some poor slob. This guy's been on hold for 92 minutes, Drew. Joe? Yeah. You're 16. Uh, supplements can contribute to penile shrinkage. What uh, kind of supplements? I take a lot of supplements, but I'm not like noticing shrinkage. But I was. I what heard, kind of supplements? Yeah. What kind of supplements? I take creatine, um, Myoplex, Pyruvate, Amino Fuel. Uh, okay. Any of those bad, Drew? N- I mean, they're not good for you, but I I don't know that they would necessarily cause any problems. All right, but ease off on that. Some of these can, you know, the, the, the DHEAs and all that stuff can raise testosterone levels with an interesting diode. And be careful with those. The jury's out. So don't screw with yourself it's too just, much. It's not so much shrinkage. It can create dysfunction when you come off. Okay. We'll be back. All right. All right. Okay. The phone number for Loveline is 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline. I'll be right back. Loveline. On 92.1 KFMA. All right. I want to thank Sean Hayes for coming in here tonight and being a perfect gentleman. Thank you for having me. It was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. It was. Will and Grace, Monday nights, 9.30, NBC. I'm sure we'll see you on the TV. I'm sure they're uh, trying to recruit you for that. As a matter of fact, you're supposed to come in, I think, uh, a couple weeks ago. For you guys? Yeah. Something didn't work out or I don't know. My publicist knows all that stuff. Oh. You don't have Drew's publicist, do you? I do. Oh, poor son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, they're all evil. They're demon seeds. <laughs> I'll to get you. Publicists. Uh, what do you think they would have been doing uh, 50 years ago if they were in Germany? If they were in Germany? Yeah. What do you think they'd be working? <clears throat> Part of the underground or running the camp? What do you think? <laughs> I'm thinking the camp. All right, we're going to take... Uh, wait, that's it. We're taking... A, okay, we're going to oh. take a uh, 22-hour break. Yes. Man, tabla. Sean, thanks for coming thanks in. Thanks for having me. Will and Grace, everyone watch that show Monday nights, 930 NBC. And until next time, this is Adam Crawler for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Money. This is Ben Loveline. The views expressed on Loveline are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station. And are probably not the views of Westwood One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins Engel. Now, please listen to this station longer. Broadcast.